How's it going guys? I got another tabletop glove comparison for you. This time we went up a price tier. So before the last video was around the $150 price range. This was, I want to say, I'm going to say ballpark 300 or 250 to 300. Um, this is more of the premium glove category. And specifically, we're going to talk about two premium short cuff glove options. One from Knox, the other one from Dainese. Uh, this is the Knox Handroid Mark V uh, pod which means the short cuff version the regular handroid is going to be the full gauntlet and then over here we have the dainese four stroke glove um, i believe this is mark ii for this one um, so yeah from there i'll just put them on talk about the features of each uh, we'll talk about i guess what is it fit feel and uh, then my afterthoughts on this i'm going to try to make this video a little bit more uh, sped up and concise than in the last one. I don't want to drag you guys along for 20 minutes if I don't have to, but just kind of highlight some of the key differences between them in protection, uh, fit, feel, quality, and then my final thoughts, and then we'll be out of here. So I'll start on the right here with the Danese. Let's get this one on. Okay. So I guess we'll start on the back of the hand, because that's probably the easiest. Um, no hard protection on the back of these first three fingers here. You do have these little nubs, I would say. I think it's a, I want to say it's a hard piece of plastic covered with a piece of leather. Um, so I guess you could consider it hard protection, but it's not, it's not going to slide. It's going to grab the same way normal leather would. But when you get to the pinky, you're going to have three hard sliders right here. And as well as a hard slider, I believe it's TPU on the outside I guess pinky knuckle almost on the outside of your pinky here. Anyways, you got some accordion leather here to make it nice and flexible. Let's see, dexterity is pretty good. From there, we're gonna move down to, I think the most important feature of this glove, which is your knuckle and back of the hand protection are gonna be made of metal. It's gonna be similar to Dainese Steel Pro gloves. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have a stainless steel insert here. And it is, I don't know if it's powder coated or if it's painted black. Um, but something to keep in mind, I guess, is the general wear and tear that you're going to see on any kind of metal um, versus any kind of plastic. The coating, I assume, will scratch over time, but it's not going to gouge out like a plastic would. So just keep in mind, if you're knocking your hands on things consistently, like this logo may start to wear and the black paint or anodizing, whatever happens to be on here, might begin to uh, scratch away over time. So just a consideration, not anything that I've noticed, but might happen long term got some more accordion here so that you get some bend in between your knuckles and the back of your uh back of your hand here nice and comfortable moving down to the wrist there's nothing much down here except for a small hard tpu piece on your outer forearm here flipping over we got our velcro strap i'd say it's a pretty solid velcro strap it's got a lot of surface area, so I don't imagine it's going to wear out very quickly. It's got a nice pull tab right here for putting the glove on. And I would, I would say one thing I do like about this glove is how low profile it is around your wrist in width and in thickness. So if you are wearing a jacket over this, which I mean, you should be wearing a jacket, you can pull it over this easily. Um, it's not going to bunch up. Your jacket cuff should be more than enough to fill, fill this gap right here. It's not very large and bulky, which is nice. Um, going up from there, we have our hard TPU slider on the outside of the palm here. It does wrap around to sort of like the heel of your hand, which is nice. Over on the right side here, we have a foam pad on the base of your thumb. Would be nice to see a hard slider here, but I totally understand. They're gonna put a foam pad there. A foam pad's better to have than nothing. You're gonna have a similar foam pad on the back of your thumb here, and then two little details here. I wouldn't say these are providing much protection. They may just be for aesthetics, but moving up onto the palm, you're going to have it double reinforced with leather here, as well as in between your index finger and your thumb going onto the palm right here. So that's nice and thick. There's also some reinforcement along the side of the pinky coupled with those hard sliders we talked about earlier. So there's very, very significant reinforcement going down your pinky on these digits here. And I do like that they put cuts. They didn't just put one big patch of material spanning all of the pinky. Um, they actually put 
little cuts in each little piece, which allows it to bend and allows your pinky the freedom to move and make a fist. That's something I've seen in gloves in the past where they'll add the extra leather here, but they'll make it one large rectangular piece. And that just makes it really hard for your pinky to crease the leather. And the material is really difficult to bend. And you end up with a pinky that only does something like this when you're trying to make a fist because there's too much leather in between uh, your pinky joints to actually bend. So that's nice that they did that. You can comfortably make a fist and grip the bar as necessary. Um, they also have, I'm gonna get you a good shot here. This seems like a silicone or a rubber, I'm gonna assume silicone insert. It's got some good texture on it. So that's gonna provide you some extra grip and maybe some adverse weather conditions gripping the bar. Um, the handlebar or throttle, whatever, whichever hand you're uh, you're wearing this on. But I don't know how this is going to stand over time. If, let's say, leaving your gloves out in the sun is going to cause this to crack, which you should probably never be leaving leather gloves out in the sun to dry anyways. But it might cause this to crack or wear over time. I, I think personally I might have just wanted to see some leather, just some reinforced leather here. Um, I've never had a problem with grip in this area, but I guess if you're buying this specifically for rainy weather or maybe winter, um, that's something for you to consider. Another note is that there is no perforations on this glove. You're looking at the fingers here. They're all smooth. So there's no ventilation at all whatsoever except on the sides of your fingers here. So if you're looking for a glove that's gonna be well ventilated that might be able to flex to summer riding, I would say if you're riding in extreme heat, like, I don't know, Texas, maybe Southern California in the desert, depending on where you're at, Arizona, I probably wouldn't recommend this glove because um, my hand is already sweating in it and I'm my house is at an appropriate temperature right now. So it, it's already getting kind of like sweaty in here and I've only had it on for a few minutes. So I can't imagine what riding would be like on a hot day. But if you're looking for something that might be more fall, spring, maybe some winter, if you wanted a short cuff in the winter, um, I think you could probably make this work, but not anything too like too freezing of temperatures, but definitely a warmer glove there. You've got perforations on the back since we're on the subject of perforations here around your wrist and then a little bit on the back of the thumb right here. But Honestly, I, I don't really think it's doing much for the breathability of the glove. So that's just something, if there's anything to take away from this, is that very adequately protective, feels very robust. The leather feels very thick, very protective, very confidence inspiring, but it's definitely not gonna vent like, like other gloves. So just keep that in mind if you're buying it for the summertime. But as far as features go, I think that's about it for the features on this one. Um, fit wise, this is a size medium and per the size chart, I believe I am between a medium and a large and I size down for the medium. I actually would need to go another size down and get a small in this. So I know Dainese's fit different than other gloves. Some people have complained that their proportions are weird. Um, like the fingers are overly long. I've heard that before. That's similar to what I'm experiencing here. All of the fingers are definitely uniformly long. The thumb itself is more significantly long than the others. But I'm also just finding the palm is really wide. Um, and I think that comes from this armor on the back, this knuckle protector. You might be able to tell just the, the way it looks from the back, the palm looks like really, really wide. It's almost like a mitt with little fingers. Um, and what I'm finding is that this dimension on the back of the knuckle is rigid. So like I'm hitting the reinforcement, the metal on either side, but if I flip it over, my palm is actually like only this wide. So there's, there's a fair amount of overhang of material, of extra material on each side. And I think that's creating this kind of void of space on either side of my hand and making the palm feel extra large. So something to consider, maybe size down, depending on if you have a relatively skinny hand or a relatively thick hand. I'm not going to say it's going to fit everyone the same way, but from my experience, I would say size down one full size, um, just because per the size chart, I technically am. I should have gotten a large or a medium large, and in this case, I should have gotten a small. Um, but yeah, I think that covers features, protection, and fit for this guy. So from here, we'll move on to the Knox. Put that one there. Okay, 
So this guy, the first thing you're going to notice is it has the BOA system, which I'll get on once I, uh, once I get the glove on. I'll talk more about that. Okay. So I guess sticking to the script, I'm going to go ahead and go through the same criteria that I did uh, with the Dainese gloves. So from the back of the hand, we're going to talk about protection moving from the tips down. Um, some nice accordion on the back of here, give you some nice flexibility on your first digit, which is nice. I, I don't think it provides that much, but design wise, I think it looks good aesthetically. The big thing with the hand droid that you're going to notice over all other gloves is just the articulation of the fingers. Um, this whole large protective plate on the back and then the actual hand droid little articulations here. So it's very polar. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. I think physically it looks really nice. Um, I really like the aesthetic of it. I like that they're trying to push forward with features um, and do something different than other glove companies. So that's nice. But what I'm finding is that in function, it's not working out the best for me, but I'll get into that later. So back here we have all of your little Android articulations here are going to provide substantial protection on the back of your fingers if you're ever to go down with the back of your hand going downwards, or if you make a fist and your knuckle happens to hit something. These are all going to provide a lot of impact protection as well as abrasion protection, so I wouldn't be surprised if the leather didn't even get touched and um, all of these rubber articulations just took the, the full brunt of the force if you were to, to go down. So there's those which offer a lot of protection. The entire back of your hand is going to be protected by this solid plastic piece that goes all across here. Um, then moving down further, you're gonna have the BOA system, which there's no protection in these areas. The leather is quite thick around the cuff, I will say that. Um, you're gonna have the BOA system, but there is no hard sliding portion around your wrist. Um, I'll touch briefly on the BOA now. I come from a snowboarding background, so I'm familiar with how to use one of these. And I think it's awesome that someone integrated it into a glove because it's very functional. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna push the BOA down to engage it. You're an audible click, and then you can turn it clockwise. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull on these like little retention string cables that go around the length of your wrist, and it snugs up your wrist. So instead of having Velcro, you can go ahead and tighten it that way, which I think is awesome. Functionally, I think it works great and it feels really nice. It kind of lets you customize the fit and you don't have to worry about Velcro wearing out over time. So that's really nice. And if you want to loosen it up, um, if you maybe made it too tight, you can always just back it off, make it a little bit looser. And if you're ready to take the glove off, you're just going to grab the knob and pull up and it's going to loosen everything. And then you can go ahead and take the glove off. So I love the integration of this feature. I think it's great. Um, I kind of wish Knox would put it on their entire glove line, but I understand that they're reserving it for their more premium options. So that makes sense. But anyways, getting into the underside now, the palm side, like I mentioned before, there's gonna be no hard protection down here. Um, there is this little flap of material, which it's not really covering anything. I guess it's gonna provide you some extra abrasion resistance down here at the base. Um, if you are sliding on these two hard pucks here, then maybe that's why this extra leather is here. <coughs> Excuse me. But yes, as I mentioned before, we got two hard sliders here, which is something I really do like about Knox is that they incorporate not one, but two. Here on the Dainese, you just have the one and then you have the soft pad on the right side, whereas here you have both. So that's very nice. Um, they do have the reinforcement here on the pinky and they do have some kind of cutout so that way your pinky is able to bend that I mentioned before over here. So same kind of thing. That's nice. Um, I believe they have a kangaroo leather palm on the Knox. And I want to say that this, the, the Dainese, it's goat. I will say that they feel the same as far as leather thickness and feel. Um, I think they provide the same kind of feel to your hand, but this um, from a texture standpoint, from a texture standpoint, the Handroid is like softer leather. Um, it feels more supple. This doesn't like you can you can feel you can feel the leather texture of this more, whereas this is just very smooth. It almost feels like it's synthetic, but I'm pretty sure it's just because it's kangaroo. You have reinforcement here across all of the palm going up a little bit on your fingers, a little on your index finger and your thumb here. And it has this hexagonal pattern on it that actually is decently grippy. I don't know if it's like 
some rubber or some paint or how they stitch that in there, but it definitely is very grippy. So I think I would like something like this more than I would like this kind of uh, silicone insert, just because I feel like even if this were to wear down, it would still like provide flexibility and I'd still be able to use the glove as designed. Whereas this, this started to crack, I'd be concerned that it would fall apart and a hole would form in the middle of the glove here. Cause I don't know if there's just a single leather, a single layer of leather stitched under this, or if there's two, but yeah, I think that's just one of the key differences between the two that I do prefer this grippiness over this, even though this may be more functional, I'm just concerned about long time uh, durability of this. So moving there up, you do have some sort of ventilation here on the pod that you don't have on the Dainese, at least on the insides of your fingers. So you have your ventilation holes here. There is, now that I'm looking, I don't think there's any ventilation anywhere else on the glove. I guess you might be able to consider this ventilation, but it's just in the plastic. It's not actually in the leather of the glove. There's nothing on the sides of your fingers. So yeah, I think that covers features for both. Um, sizing for this guy, this is a medium. I think it fits perfect. Um, I've tried on smalls in the Knox lineup before in other gloves, and I think that they don't fit per their size chart. So I should be per their size chart a medium large and then I'm actually a medium so I guess they run a bit larger than than they're advertised I will say um, because previously I bought a small in one of the Knox gloves and returned it because it was too small even though their size chart said that that's what I should be so anyways that's besides the point these are both mediums I would say the Dainese fits a bit larger as far as mediums go so maybe size down but the pod fits like a medium should, in my opinion. Um, I've been a medium in other gloves. I believe in the in the two Revits that I reviewed in the last video, they were both size large, but I am a size medium in those as well. So typically across the board, I'm a medium, I'm a medium in the Knox, but I'm a small in the Dainese. So take that for what it's worth as far as sizing goes, if that helps you make your decision. Obviously, I suggest that you go in person if you can and uh, try these on, but anyways. Um, going into just like some final thoughts on both of these. One thing I was kind of disappointed in specifically with the Knox is the fit and finish did not feel adequate per the price tier that it's in. Um, this one is $259. This one is $300. Uh, if you get the Dainese goes on sale pretty frequently for 20% off. I think they're running a Black Friday special right now. So that puts them almost one to one for price. So I'd say that these are pretty adequate to cross shop against each other, but the Dain the not the Dainese, the Knox feels this whole plastic area on the back of the hand just kind of feels like cheap, like plastic that you'd find in your car. Um, it almost feels like that black plastic crinkly trim that you'd find uh, in like the touch surfaces of a vehicle. I don't know if you can hear if I press on this. It crinkles and creaks, so it, it just makes me feel like the fit and finish isn't that that good on the product, um, which is unfortunate because these were the ones I was hoping to keep, and I was really looking forward to getting these in, but they're kind of a little bit of a letdown. Um, functionally, I'm sure that they provide tons of protection and everything, and they're very comfortable as far as like the articulation of your fingers, but I am finding some resistance with the back of the hand here. Um, the way that these little guys feed into the holes on the back of your palm. Let me try to angle this so you can see. There we go. So the middle finger and the ring finger, they, they articulate fine. There's no resistance going into these holes um, on the back. But I'm finding, and you can actually see it, the index finger does not line up well with the hole that it goes into. And there's a lot of friction over here on the sides. So when I'm moving my index finger, you can probably hear it. It squeaks and creaks. And um, I'm not sure if that's something that would wear in over time, but it definitely, 
It kind of made me cringe when I first put them on and I started bending my fingers and I started hearing this. I was like, oh yeah, that's not something that I want when I'm in this price tier. So it's nice of Knox to include that feature and kind of push the envelope with design, but I think that the Dionese kind of sticking to a conventional design, there's like this, the simplicity of it, kind of like a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of mentality, I think in this case is winning out. Um, but aesthetically, I do really like the way that the pod looks. Um, otherwise, I guess to continue talking about fit and finish, I noticed that there's a lot more like flyaway threads on the Knox than like on the Dainese. So like just some loose threads, one here, some here on the back of the knuckle, there's one floating around. There it is right there. There's some more on this index finger here. There we go. I'm trying to show you guys. They're just, they're kind of everywhere. There's just some free threads flying about. And while I could just like attack this with a pair of scissors and cut all those off, it was just something that like when I was having the unboxing experience and um, opening these up, I didn't get that kind of premium feel that I expected from the Knox. Um, just with the way that the plastic all felt on the back and the way that, oh, here's one. The way that this is just kind of, I don't want to say coming undone, but it kind of is. Like there's this, let's see if I can focus. Yeah, so that wasn't very confidence inspiring. It kind of made me question whether the uh, the stitching is going to hold up over time or not. But yeah, anyways, that's kind of my, my points of concern with the pod. Um, so I ex fully expected to like the pod way more than the Dainese, but I think I came out liking the uh, the Dainese more. So I think that about wraps up my thoughts of these against each other. Um, I'm not going to go with either of these, unfortunately, so I'm still on the hunt. I think that the glove I'm actually going to go forward with is the, it's, it's actually by Knox. Um, it's going to be the Olten Mark II. Um, I think it's a good compromise of price and protection and comfort. I actually bought it in a size small, thinking that I was a small and it was just a bit too tight and I ended up giving it to my buddy. So he has it now and I gave it to him before I was able to make a video on it. So what I'm gonna do is order another pair of those in a size medium, which will be actually mine. And then I'll come back on here and review them and give you a rundown of why I ended up picking those over the, either of the two Revit's from the last video and either of these two premium options that I've now had exposure to. So. I'll get into that on the next one. I would say expect that in the next couple weeks, hopefully prior to Christmas. Um, it depends how long shipping takes and if my size is in stock. But yeah, thanks for tagging along for this review on these guys. I apologize again. It looks like the video ran a bit long, but I wanted to be as thorough as possible and kind of express my concerns with either and explain why they're going back. I guess I didn't really get into why, even though I like the Dainese, why it's going back. For me, it's just... The way it feels, price difference-wise, it doesn't seem like it's worth $100 more than the other gloves that I reviewed in the first video, the two Revit's, the Cayenne and the, um, the RSR4. It doesn't feel like... I'd, I'd rather have the $100 in my pocket and wear one of those. I think those uh, they have the same kind of protection. Um, you're not really getting much more for the money here. I mean, if you really want metal, then, then go for that. But I think features-wise... Those ones are more than adequate. I'd say the gloves in the 150 price tier are more than adequate. It's just if you really wanted a Dainese glove, you wanted the metal, then I'd say go for that. But I guess I just wasn't wowed by either of these the way I expected to be for the amount of money that I was paying. And I was fully prepared to keep either one of these if I felt like my expectations were exceeded. Um, they just weren't. So anyways, thanks for tagging along again. Apologize for the length, but expect another video coming out in the next few weeks with my uh, my final choice on the Knox Olten Mark II. So thank you all. Appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.